Hey YouTube JP Dillon. This is going to be part four of the Emerson AC-133 nightmare. And where we're at currently, I replaced the color crystal just kind of on a whim, but that didn't bring our color back. In the last video we went from color bars to black and white. We now have no color at all. And we've still got the big thick bar at the bottom of the screen, uh, which again is tunable. I can move it back and forth and change its characteristics. So I've checked the feedback line that comes from pin 2 on the flyback uh, that goes up to the sink in the video IC processor and so far that appears to be okay. Uh, if I come over here to pin 2 and I take a measurement I've got about half a volt there uh, and then uh, let's see here and uh, if I come up to pin 3 on the infamous video processor I see uh, here we go I get about 10 volts so that's not quite right so I have that to look at uh, that's referring to it's part of the clamping circuit I don't think that it has to do with color but uh, I'm also kind of curious about this IFIC you can see I've got the shield pulled up here I haven't done any checks on that all the capacitors in this circuit test okay but the fact that I'm slowly losing video response and no color kind of makes me wonder if that's another place to look too. So I'm going to uh, shut the camera off briefly and take some measurements on that and see if all those line up and then we'll go back to the feedback circuit uh, which just doesn't look right. Okay so here's where we're at so far. Uh, coming back to the uh, and just in, in case you're curious, the little feedback resistor and everything here, this 1K, is still alive. I haven't really done any more troubleshooting in that area because I'm focused on the IF. Uh, the IF I see, as you can see, I've taken some notes here. Uh, pin 3 is the AGC line, which is very high in comparison to what it's supposed to be here. It's almost double. Uh, likewise, uh, the RF AGC is low. Those might just might be adjustments. Uh, but more so than that, if we look at other portions of the machine, like the video output pin, it's supposed to be 4.3. Uh, it's a little high at 5.3. That's fine because the input voltage is about a volt and a half high. Uh, 2 volts high on the video output uh, pin 8. But really the significance is, is I'm looking at pin 14. You can see I've circled that in my notes. Uh, looking at pin 14, they label that as 7.1 volts. And I found that at 14 volts. It's at the supply voltage. Uh, so that's weird. That may indicate an internal failure. I think I might measure the resistance between 12 and 14 and see if there's a short there. Uh, just because looking up the circuit, uh, 14 seems to be a part of the video IF amp circuit, but as you can see, the the Q601 there doesn't have any 14 volts there, although dropping it through that 220 resistor might create that. If we follow that line. Uh, we go to the first IF, uh, first video amp, which shows 9.8 volts on the collector, and 12 on the second I, uh, video amplifier, and that's a 12 volt line that comes down from the power supply and all that sort of thing, and that's part of your video output transistors, anyway. Uh, I just found it strange that that is so freaking high. 
So it might be that R169 or 619 there, that 820K to ground is open and it's causing that voltage to be too high. Uh, that capacitor might be shorted, that C618 there. That could be causing it. I just find that very significant. Um, don't know, maybe the IF uh, IC is defective, maybe it's not. I'm going to see if I can figure out why that voltage is so high. It shouldn't be double. Um, so yeah, I'm going to look at that and see if I can figure that guy out. And then maybe we'll go a little more in depth on this problem. Okay, so after doing a little more probing, uh, with a nice strong signal, not with a little handheld generator, uh, a lot of these erroneous readings normalize. For example, pin 14 uh, dropped to 8 uh, when I had a nice strong signal. Weak signal, it kicks it up. So, considering that's part of the AGC amplifier, it's doing its job. Uh, likewise, uh, pin 3, which used to read really high, calms down to about 6.2 volts. Uh, pin 4 on a strong signal goes down uh, to about 0.4 volts. It was normally about 1.4, so I guess that's doing its job. Uh, all of these other voltages, 5, uh, all this seems to kind of settle down when you get a nice fat signal in it. So that's probably not the culprit here. Um, going back to this, uh, if it'll focus, there we go, the R747 is alive, following this back up to the IC, R660 is alive, uh, and there is a current difference there. So I think that that feedback line is alive, there's no open resistors there. Uh, this also branches off into this little network here. Uh, that C735 I've replaced, which was defective, and I honestly haven't checked 745 yet, uh, or pin 10 off the flyback that comes over here. That's part of our power regulation circuit, which I had correct voltages on. Uh, this is your oscillator circuit. I'm going to double check everything here, but I think as I recall that was okay. There may be some sort of feedback derived from that line. I'm not sure. We'll have to look at that too. But still, uh, no. with a really strong signal I get my colored bars, my rolling color bars back, but still no color. And then I've got the what looks like a giant fat white blinking thing on the left side of the screen. So uh, it may be that the next point that we look at is down here and make sure that all of the drive section is working correctly. So that'll be the next part of this. This certainly has been a pain in the ass. Uh, I've never had a such difficulty with a, a no color symptom like this. Definitely trying. Alright, so here's a look at our block diagram. If we zoom in here a little bit, we can see that our that IF chip there really is just an IF amplifier, uh, AFC and AGC. And with the right signal, that looks okay. All those voltages look okay. And then it splits off after pin 12 to a video amp, and then splits off to a ceramic filter which plucks out the audio, 4.5 megahertz or whatever it is. And then we see it goes into Q602 and 603, and then the final stages uh, before it goes into the jungle IC that does everything here. And then we've got our color control, subcolor control, 3.58. Uh, it also splits off and goes down to the sync separator and the drive. So. The be-all, end-all test uh, to see if it's IF related or not, obviously, is to just disconnect pin 12 there and then inject a signal at Q601 
and see if that changes anything there. Sorry for moving around. And it looks like that uh, that pin 2 that we looked at earlier is a clamper. It's a brightness control so that things get too bright on the screen it backs off on the uh, video. So that, all that circuit seemed to be okay. They don't show that going off anywhere else either where they do on the schematic. Uh, let's take a look at here see if there's anything in the block diagram that would suggest troubleshooting points it's definitely a puzzler but I think the next thing that I'm going to do is just dump a direct composite signal in here and see if we get our color and stuff back that would truly suggest that it is IF related uh, but if it's still malfunctioning, then we have to very carefully go over this circuit. Because nominally all the voltages look pretty close. But obviously something isn't right. I mean, something's not right. Probably in the, the color chroma amp or something like that. We replaced this IC and that didn't fix it. But that doesn't mean there isn't something there. Check all these voltages and just be really freaking thorough. I went over the grounds with the power off this time and everything appears to be unified. All the chips are not properly grounded. Uh, all of the video and IF stages appear to be grounded. So, uh, yeah, this one's kind of... This one's really confusing to me. Definitely got to put my thinking cap on with this one. Alright, so I've been playing around with this thing in the video circuit and I've tried injecting a signal directly into the uh, video amp pin on the jungle IC, which was pin 5. Still had color bars messing around, and then what happened was, is I was playing around in the oscillator circuit, uh, which is, a bit of focus here. I was playing around in the oscillator circuit, and I'm thinking maybe TC601 up there, that tuner, trimmer capacitor is bad. We already replaced the crystal. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, okay, well, maybe C664 is bad. Uh, R643 checks out okay, so I don't need to change that. But just probing around, I accidentally shorted one side of the crystal to ground, accidentally. And when you do that, you get color, the color bars stop rolling. Now granted the colors are wrong, and there's no reds whatsoever, but that tells you, that's kind of where we're looking at is that area right there because I can stop the colors from rolling. Another interesting thing is that that sidebar goes away too. Interesting, huh? So by grounding the low side of the crystal I can get a controllable picture somewhat. I don't have any reds but I do have blues and I do have greens very weird. So I'm going to play around in that circuit a little bit more. Uh, I think that's really significant. I'm not sure why it has any bearing on why we get that video bar on the left or right or not. And the voltage on uh, pin 22 is okay. It's like 3.4 something. Uh, and the uh, pin 21 is 8.3 volts, so um, that's okay. So 642, which is a 68 picofarad, could be wrong. Throwing off the frequency. Uh, I think R643 was okay. I measured that one. Uh, TC601 could be defective. And 644 could be open. or short yeah, I don't think it's shorted because that would have no difference if I shorted that low side of the crystal to ground. But uh, very interesting.
So at least we're making progress. Let's see what else we can find with this thing. All right, so I pulled the TC601 trimmer out, which looks very overheated, and I replaced it with a four to 20 micro uh, picofarad capacitor. And as you can see, my color bars have stopped rolling. Uh, and I can adjust the tint. So I have color processing, but as you can see, I still don't have any reds yet. But we're progressing. We don't have any reds. We just have green or we have blue. Or we do have reds, they're just not in the right places. So the color is not quite demodulating correctly. It's kind of trippy. Uh, but our color bars have stopped rolling and we still don't have really correct reds. And I still don't have any color control, meaning if I turn the chroma up and down, although the voltage at the pin varies, it doesn't change any. But we're getting there, little by little. So looky here. We've got color shifting around. Not quite stable yet, but we do have green, blue, and red, and then recycling to green. Not quite there yet, and we still don't have color control, but we do have colors. Uh, and we've still got that weird horizontal blinking thing that, well, I, actually you can fine-tune that away, along with your color. Very interesting. Anyway, the point of concern, which I'll show you in a minute here, uh, was in the oscillator circuit. And one of the other viewers mentioned that uh, if you don't have 3.58, this chip won't even begin to coat color. And as you remember, we had the rolling color bars and we were able to stop them. Uh, and that was pursuant to C642 uh, on the schematic, which was a 68 picofarad, although it tested good on the uh, capacitor tester when I changed it out with another one. As you can see, we have dim, but we do have color. And we do have red, green, and blue, albeit not very good. You can see that we do have them, and then we still have this shading over here, which something's going on with video processing, but as you can see, we've got red, green, and blue there. And it is shifting, so the oscillator is drifting a little bit. Uh, again, I still have the shading here, which was gone, and now it's back again. And I still don't have color control, so I need to figure out what's going on there. And I need to see if I can maybe tweak the oscillator a little bit so that it stops rolling because it does roll sideways you can see there that's out of sync and trying to get the correct bars to display. So I think there's something still going on in here in this oscillator circuit that's not quite right. But I can at least get it to stop oscillating long enough to work. And as you can see, it's kind of shifting colors around. It's moving. It's oscillating very slowly. And furthermore, that shaded area over there is changing colors now too, which I didn't have before. And I can tweak it with the tin control. 
The green's now more yellow and the red's now more purple. So it's wrong colors, it's not demodulating, at least not correctly. And I still have no color control, but we do have color now in kind of a weird twisted sort of way. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's progressing, and it still definitely has problems locking in on the color, but it's there. Let's see now if I've got if I lessen. Sorry about that. It's, if I lessen the color intensity and a killer function kicks in now we lost our sink again it's just so weird how that behaves and I can shift it with the tin control, I put the tin at midpoint. It actually looks almost correct, not really though. You've got that shading on the left that's screwing with everything. And then every once in a while, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but if we zoom in a little, it's hard to see on camera. But the uh, the oscillator is shifting back and forth. That's my timer on the on that. So yeah, it's weird. And now I've got a dark bar at the top here again. Very strange how this thing behaves. But as you can see, we're making progress on it. All right, so here it is, dialed in, best I can get it. We can definitely see that we've got our color bars from orange to red to blue to green all the way across and it's stable now after making sure that the AFT was on uh, but still although I can control this with the tint and move the bars around there's still no color intensity so we need to look at the killer circuit we need to look at the uh, burst and uh, uh, all that sort of thing and my uh, uh, sidebar is gone again. It comes and goes when it wants. And then I've got this darkened area up top here that I don't know if you can tell on camera. This thing's a pain in my ass, but it's getting there. And I thank everybody that's helped so far. Uh, we'll get it. Just a matter of time.